The topic of uh, today's panel is making strides in counterparty credit risk. It's very important uh, today. We live in a very liquid, very dynamic uh, world when every day brings some news um, about new exemptions, about new deadlines. We have clearing, we have Basel three, we have accounting, uh, we have really, really a lot of uh, new and uh, changing stuff. I will uh, introduce our panel. We have very experienced people here. Uh, everyone has uh, 15 or uh, 20 years in financial industry. Uh, left on your side, uh, we have Tanvir Bhati, a global head of valuation control and analytics group in City. Uh, next, uh, Frank De Jong, uh, his partner in Ernst & Young. He leads uh, quantitative advisory services across EMEA. Uh, also, a country leader for risk advisory uh, in Belgium. Next uh, is uh, Duncan Richford, uh, currently head of uh, capital optimization, co-head of CBA in uh, CBA, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Uh, myself, uh, I came from quantitative background. Now, now I am a head of research with Quantify. Uh, tonight we discussed a uh, broad range of questions. We did some preparation and we talked which with topics we think will be most interesting for our audience. And uh, because we didn't know exactly what audience is, we tried to stay broad. Judging by questions, I think uh, our audience appreciated this. They asked questions uh, again. They were coming back to what was discussed. So definitely that was something uh, of interest for them and I hope they learn. If not a lot, then something. That was our purpose, right? And as many of you know, uh, you know, on both sides, the US and the European side, there's been a continuing convergence in terms of what do we mean by fair value and, and the whole idea of the exit price. If there's one thing that I think we, we, we see happening is that <coughs> through the, um, the extra push, if you want, coming from IFRS 13, is that basically um, people are more and more forced to connect the dots within the organization to make sure that those different numbers that, that are floating out there are sort of reflecting the same, the same reality. Just to rehearse the fact that the academic community um, has sort of posited the view that you know, FBA is not part of fair value. So, so I'm of the view right now, Dimitri, that I think FBA is a part of fair value and, and, um, and, and, and that's where we are. In the past, we used to be able to say, well, take a LIBOR or something like that, which is an average market rate, and it represents sort of the price that all banks are being uh, are funding themselves at. And then, of course, in the crisis, we've seen that um, uh, diverge much more systematically. So maybe to complete this, to close this topic, I will maybe uh, give a couple of uh, thoughts from a quantitative point of view. So maybe the reason why it's uh, such a hard debate about FVE and not about price jumps, because this is uh, new, and that it's easier to quantify, right? Uh, Basel III explicitly recommend to use uh, uh, credit uh, spreads, uh, CDS spreads, or some proxies if you cannot find CDS spread uh, for CVA calculation for CVA VAR. Uh, the pace of change of the accounting standards have seen very, very slow. Do you see that as a major issue for the industry in terms of the accounting standards being changed? Is that something that you're seeing? In the, um, the sort of area of own credit um, adjustments, to, to what extent, from your own experience, have you, have you attempted to hedge, hedge the credit components of that and how successful do you feel you've been? Well, I think it was a good opportunity for us to be part of a panel in a multidisciplinary way. We had some systems angles, we had some pure modeling angle, we had some industry expertise, and then obviously as privileged observers to the industry, we have a role to play in this as well. Uh, well, I work in the CVA and it's great I have an opportunity to meet many other people working my job. Often we're behind the desk, we don't get out much, and it's, it's, it's great to exchange ideas, people in different banks and people in my own bank. I wanted the opportunity to mix with um, uh, fellow professionals, uh, to uncover best practices, 
And I think looking at some of the names of the people who were invited and accepted to turn up, I thought it was a good opportunity to, to have a good Q&A and, um, and, and, and decide you know, what, what's, which way the industry is headed in terms of risk and finance. I found, I found the whole evening very interesting um, from the perspective of being able to see that everybody else is suffering from the same issues that we are. Um, that uh, there's basically the same problems, whether it comes from a business or an IT perspective, quant perspective, is the same across the industry. Some of the speakers this evening brought up some very interesting points, particularly about concentration risks, which require a lot of uh, uh, cooperation between the IT teams and quant teams. And also, it was very refreshing to hear how many banks are taking CBA so seriously. I think it's immensely useful. Uh, there are so many signs when people have internal debates they don't have, have the cross-fertilisation they have amongst other banks. And I think the great point, apart from the uh, presentations that are made, is the mingling afters where you have a chance to be able to sort of talk quietly amongst practitioners, ask the questions that perhaps people aren't quite brave enough to go and do it in front of an audience, but actually get a fuller answer as well. The people who stick around for the networking are clearly passionate about what they do, and that sort of the sort of person that I am, I'm quite passionate about, uh, passionate about finance and risk and so it's, it's an opportunity for like-minded people to get together. It's doing, I've enjoyed the evening, it's, it's, confirmed, it's confirmed a lot of what I thought which is, which is interesting and useful as well, so yeah it's, it's definitely worth doing. We can read a lot of documentation, uh, we can read a lot of things on the internet about it but it's actually it's better to meet people and you really see the risk they face on a day-to-day -day basis. It's one of these places where you realize that you're never faced alone with the same challenges and therefore exchanging views is always an enriching experience.